G'day guys, and welcome to G-Man Speaks. Today, we're gonna to take a look at a fellow YouTuber named I'm Ernest. Um, he has a video where he talks about his divorce and then sort of how, where he ended up nine years later. And so the reason, guys, that I'm playing this one is I know a lot of you guys out there who are watching this kind of content are either way, A, uh, literally your, your wife's walked out on you or something's happened um, and you're getting separated and you're going to go through a pretty bad time soon and you're looking for a bit of information to sort of soothe yourself. You've got guys who have recently gone through it, recovering, um, as it does take quite a while to get past that. And you've got guys probably out there who watch this content who want to share some information with the younger gents uh, in the comments. Let them know that while it's a bad time, things do get better. And that's the purpose of this. So this guy has recovered. He tells you his story and he tells you sort of a bit about what his life is like now. To my understanding, this gentleman... Uh, he's about 62 years old, so I'll play it, interject here and there, guys, with some of my own experiences and some of my thoughts on some of the things that he is raising. So let's jump in. Hello, everybody. I'm Ernest. Well, I'm stuck in traffic, driving through Austin, Texas, on my way to Dallas for the weekend. This is uh, Labor Day weekend 2024. I think it's, uh, what, August the 30th? I think I'm not sure uh, so what I'm here to talk about is life after divorce nine years later how did it all work out I say it worked out pretty darn good um, yeah, good it was rough at the beginning it's uh, I can say it's the hardest thing I've ever done it affected me more than anything even in losing family members uh, it, it was harder than that for some reason whatever the reasons are about the differences in divorce um, I think it's sort of a death in itself you know in the uh, in the Institute of family maybe yeah i think that's true and a lot of guys um say this it's just sort of how i felt as well guys but see you guys going through it or you never forget the day it's one of those things where it's like where you know exactly where you were when you realized things weren't gonna go well and you're gonna get divorced whether or not you're fighting and everything leading up to it or it was a shock exit or you've done something whatever right it's still hard to go through all that but especially if it's a surprise to you and you feel like you've been rug pulled right but I can tell you now, guys, um, I can resonate with this guy quite a bit. And that's why I wanted to share the video because I think a lot of you guys will too. Is that you know, he's bearing it out. He He's telling you, you know, you can see the pain in his eyes still when he thinks about it. It's one of those things, guys, that it is very much um, like a death. It's, a, it's like a death of your former self and of the life that you had previously, um, whether you have kids or not. But it's a, it, it is a death of one phase of your life and i would say also it's a crisis of faith because I, I like to use that terminology when i talk about it because you believed in one thing you believed in how society worked or you believed in what um marriage and um you know longer term relationships are sold as and then you sort of been right through it you may have sacrificed a lot you may have put up with a lot of bad behaviors etc but at the end you get chewed up uh, and spat out and you know, you just start thinking, "Hey, this doesn't make this isn't making sense." I've never been told about this. No one's told me that these things can happen and that people can treat me so badly. And what did I really do to deserve that? You know, and I think guys get a really bad uh, treatment a lot of the time in divorces that far exceeds. You know, even if they were out banging the, you know, the secretary or the chick from cricket club or whatever, right? Like, I just don't think what men go through during divorce proceedings stacks up to any sort of indiscretions at all but the worst so when you've done nothing wrong right so that, that's that's sort of the point that i'm making here um but yeah i don't know for sure so usually it's the woman that files for divorce in my case it was it was my my ex-wife uh, on the grounds that she didn't have any feelings for me and uh, 
if you know anything about women, it's it's all about what their feelings are. And uh, right or wrong, I don't know how that works, but you know, us men, we sometimes suppress our feelings and keep trugging yep. along, even though it might be wrong, maybe. Yeah, I think that's right. Um, you know, to me, he made a really good point that, that it is true, guys. Women do operate purely on emotion. Most of them, my most of them, um, and will make some life-changing decisions based on how they might be feeling a certain day or how they might have been feeling for a short amount of time, like getting divorced and whatever. All right, and, and thinking that the husband is the cause of the problem. But I think what also hurts guys, right, is, and this guy probably isn't articulating it that well, is you made a, made a lot of sacrifices for uh, the woman in your life. You made you passed up opportunities. You invested in her financially, um, emotionally, all that sort of stuff. Um, you've elevated her in life, and they can just get rid of you um, without thinking really to 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 giving two stuffs about you at all. You're thrown into the you're thrown into the gutter, right, like a piece of shit. Um, and they'll just step over you, maybe pull your wallet out of your pocket as well and take the last remaining two bucks you got in your wallet. All right, that's what a lot of guys go through and that's that's what guys struggle to get over. Yes, um, there are uh, guys who never get over a woman who they loved and they broke up with them or whatever, right? Like men do deal with heartbreak a lot differently, but I think the biggest emotional blow is some of the bad treatment and some of the bullshit that goes on during divorces, right? Whether it's, Shit things that happen with money and property and bad behavior and doing all sorts of things, right? Um, <clears throat> poisoning children against the other parent, all that sort of stuff that happens that people don't talk about a lot. When that stuff starts happening, that's what hurts. That's what um, men take a long time to come back from, realizing that you could be selfless your whole life. You could be like a donkey with a pack on its shoulders and the, and the rider. And the moment you start sort of breaking down, boom, you're done, right? You're done, and and they're out looking for the next replacement without even thinking about it, and not even shedding a tear. Oh, okay. Oh, G Man's dead now. Oh, okay. Well, uh, let's just get another one. You know, <laughs> well, that might seem like an exaggeration. That's sort of how women think. They switch off, and they're gone, mate. And um, once again, if a woman does, always say this in my videos, guys. There is nothing more cold than a woman who's realized she doesn't want anything to do with you anymore, or who's realized that they've checked out and they're trying to sabotage things from the inside. There is nothing worse than that. And so if you guys have experienced it, put it in the comments. It can be a very, very um, disturbing process to go through to see how somebody can treat you with such disdain and treat you so badly. And it happens to a lot of guys. A lot of guys don't talk about it. We should learn something from the women. I don't know. Um, but that's how what she divorced me at and that she didn't want our kids seeing how bad our marriage was and thinking that that it was okay to stay in a marriage like that and to tell you the truth I didn't understand that quite a bit because I, in my opinion the marriage wasn't all that bad we didn't fight that much we didn't have uh, really financial difficulties uh, it's just whatever she was feeling and um, right or wrong she filed for divorce so it is it's going to be nine years I can't remember when my divorce was final either November early November or late October of 2015 um, so it's almost a decade Wow uh, I'm almost been divorced as long as I was married that's the point that I say is like even though he's doing well in his past he still remember it you still remember dates you still remember when shit went down especially if it was traumatic um, and obviously this guy's one was he obviously went through a hard time this is a man who has um, come back probably from a really bad situation and um, yeah you just don't forget right that's the reality of it guys will tell you to harden up and get over it and all that sort of shit but it is, it's like you remember the day your mum died or your dad died or whatever, your dog died that you loved, right? You remember that. And, it, and, it, and it's the same sort of feeling. The thing about divorce, as far as a man goes, I, I feel, you're kind of on your own. And nobody's really concerned about how the man feels because 
you're kind of supposedly supposed to be okay and you're a man and you take care of yourself and um, that's what men do we just we just get it done um, nobody's really going to feel the pain that you're going through or be there with you and in most cases I can't say I mean I've reached out to my family uh, they were as supportive of as, as as they could have been and uh, not they're not near me or live nearby me and so I pretty much did it alone uh, I did do some counseling um, that did help and it got me what the counseling did with me it got me on my journey to mental health and I researched it I watched a lot of YouTube videos on on the subject and I can say it it, uh, it benefit me a lot and I am way better I feel like I'm a stronger better person after have gone through divorce you know that whole saying no pain no gain that's true with mental health too because uh, life can be hard and uh, you need to be harder if you can and that's right I mean and I'm not sort of pity party guys and I've said this in a lot of my videos is you could be telling people or other guys about what you're going through but the reality is their eyes glaze over like they got their own problems going on. They don't want to hear about your stuff. Or number two, it makes them feel or reflect on their situation saying, shit, this could be me. Uh, what this guy is saying is very similar to what's going on behind closed doors at home. It's stuff I'm dealing with with my missus or whatever. They don't want to hear about it, right? It's an uncomfortable truth uh, and also shows them where they could end up. But like, that's why I created this channel, guys. Yeah, I love hanging shit on the chicks on TikTok and all of that. But it was more a place for men to get together of all ages and share information and be almost like a community where we can talk about stuff so guys are armed with information. That's it. It's, yes, we have fun. Guys, we love talking shit. We love um, you know, bantering and talking about chicks and having a laugh at them and all that. You know, gym, gym, gym locker talk type stuff. It's always fun. You can never get old. We love it. But, the, yeah, the reason why I'm doing a bit more of this stuff, um, you know, with a bit more of a serious tone is – because that was the original intent, guys. I um, used to teach guys about female behavior through my experiences and my good and bad experiences and also other guys to encourage them to share their experiences. So that's why I like to watch videos like this because this is a man, an experienced man in life, sharing his experience. So that's why I thought it was fitting. And, um, and just be patient with yourself and to, uh, to let the emotions flow through you and leave you sometimes they don't completely leave <laughs> uh, there is some resentment there uh, I can't I cannot uh, deny uh, because uh, it was pretty traumatic now they do say women move on faster than men. I I believe that. I've seen that so many yep. times uh, with my experience with my ex-wife. The reason why that happens is too, and a lot of guys don't understand, is that they check out a long time before they pull the trigger on you. Like they're waiting for that small excuse. They're waiting for the cause. But they might have checked out six months, 12 months, two years, three years. Who knows? They're waiting for you to fuck up ever so slightly so they have... Um, cause to try and start an argument and then escalate it up into a separation and divorce. They're, they're already done. Like they've already moved on mentally. They're probably out cheating and doing stuff anyway, guys. They're very good at hiding things. And we as men don't like to think that our wife or long-term girlfriend or whatever is doing that sort of thing. But if she's cold and you're getting nothing and they're disrespectful and staying out late and doing all that sort of bullshit and behavior that I hear a lot about, like guys won't tell you when it's happening to them, they'll tell you after the fact when things have blown up and they're like having a beer and they're drowning their sorrows, right? They'll tell you about it, it happens all the time. That's what's happening, guys. So that's, they, they, they check out. So you're basically a husk of a man by the time you get through three years of bad treatment, two years of bad treatment, whatever, whatever happens that gets this thing to get to critical mass and blows up, they're already out the door. They've already been out the door. <laughs> so it isn't that so much they move on quicker, they they do it while they're still in, and men don't. We're like, oh, shit, what happened? Oh, fuck, you know? Like, 
oh, I didn't know that happened. Oh, you know, then you start realizing what it's all about and what they're like. And I was even telling a, a really good friend of mine about um, some of this stuff that I went through that I've shared with you guys on the channel. And he was like, he just couldn't believe that it happened. Um, and that doesn't happen. It was a pretty dismissive of it. Like it was like a one-off case, you know, one in a million, one in a billion type case. And, um, you know, sorry to say, but it's a lot more common than that. And that's why a lot of you guys are probably watching. It's like, what the hell? I want to learn about it. I want to also listen to a guy talking who's been around and can share his bad experiences too. But yeah, it's, um, it is a true awakening. That's when you... That's, that's why as a man, I think too, you start realizing what women are all about once you go through the, the marriage cycle, once you go through a long-term relationship cycle, whatever it is, when you see it all go round and round and if it ends badly too, right, which most relationships do end pretty acrimoniously, it's just the reality of it, you get to see what it's all about. And that's when you start questioning, hang on, they're not all sugar and spice like I was taught in school or what I saw in Disney or whatever it is. And I think that's part of the struggle that, that men have. And with women, I just know they just, and I think it's a lot of opportunity for women. Women are constantly getting hit on. Uh, and it's just a lot easier for them to just find a, uh, a romantic partner or a fling or whatever uh, I can true. tell you that like me in this nine years I had one relationship that was four and a half years um, and my ex <laughs> my ex he moved in uh, a neighbor and his son like literally like two months three months after I moved out of the house Okay, but like, that's what I don't get to. And that sucks, right? As you start realizing, hang on, you're disposable, right? You're thinking uh, you've got this marriage contract, you've put vows in, all of that, and you're disposable. But what I truly can't understand, and I think I was talking about this in my single mother video that I'm that is either due to put out or I'm, I've already put out, guys. I, I sort of play around with the scheduling. Why, if you saw this literally happen to a dude... And then you go in there two months later, like, I don't understand it. You're next. Like, I just don't understand guys who do this. It's just denial, right? It's like you watch a, it's like Lemmings. Have you guys seen Lemmings, um, the video game or Lemmings? They're, they're little animals and they run off cliffs, you know? They follow each other off cliffs. Like, it's just stupid. Like, guys, wake up. Like, if, you, if you're getting with women who've already done shit like this or a bad mouthing an ex and all that, you are next. Like, mark my words. I'm trying to stop you from doing stupid things, but... People don't listen. Um, that lasted about eight months. And then she met another guy. She married that guy. I don't remember how long they were married, like um, a year and a half. And I kind of actually liked that guy. Uh, you know, he seemed to be an, an okay guy around my kids and all that. And um, But she divorced him too. She kicked him out of the house. And then she, you know, three or four, since then, uh, like every year, th there's a new guy. Um, I'm, I'm always, I've always been slow to get in a relationship, and I, I've had like three or four relationships in all my 61 years of being on this earth. I'm not saying that I didn't have other women there, but I wouldn't consider them relationships. They were you know, as uh, they're just women that passed through my life and um, it was nothing serious. But that's the reality, right? Like it, is it doesn't matter how good looking a guy is as well. We all talk about Chad and he gets all the chicks and he puts no effort in. No, they still have to put effort in, guys. I can tell you, I, as a guy who womanized and did really well out of it, um, yes, I'm tall and I've got the muscles and all that, guys. All right, I put the work in to get the muscles. Obviously, I'm born with the height. But, or the genetics for the height. Um, but the reality is you're putting in a shitload of time. So guys who are pretty successful as women, it isn't easy. It's more like you're investing time in chasing down chicks and eventually some of them, they, they land, right? And, and so you're constantly chasing women. But it's very hard to meet women for any guy. Not to, Yeah, sure, it's a bit easier if, you, if you're a good-looking dude and all that and you can talk the talk and you know how they work and you can sort of manipulate it around a little bit. 
But women seem to have this thing that it's easy for guys to you know bang around and bang chicks and all that. It's really it's actually a really hard thing to do. And then what a lot of guys don't understand is when their wife leaves them and goes out into the dating market, they're getting slammed out five ways from Sunday. Like that's just the reality of it. Like they're on dating apps one week, two weeks after, one day after meeting up in car parks and getting pounded. Like I, I can tell you from experience, God done it. I, I've literally been the guy who does that. So, and been told all the bullshit and they all rag out the husband that they're fighting over custody with or whatever, you know, it's just crazy stuff. But that's how it, it worked out in, in, in my way, in, in my particular divorce financially, yeah, the guy usually takes a hit, especially versus a woman if you have kids or if you make, uh, if you're the breadwinner or you have a business or whatever and she doesn't or, you know, you're going to pay for it. Uh, See, mark this guy's words, guys. You're going to pay for it, right? I've always been fortunate enough, guys, that if I've, if I've gotten serious with a girl and, and you know, I got married as well and had girlfriends and live-ins and all that, you need to go with a woman, and this is hard to find, right? But you need to go with a woman who is on your financial level or who might have some assets. A lot of women don't, and that just disqualifies them, right? You'd rather be alone than getting with a woman with less assets or earning potential than you, and then things blow up, you become de facto after a couple of years or whatever it is, and then they rug pull you and take all your shit. Like that happens, right? And so the best way to try and minimize your risk if you're choosing to do this, because as I say, guys, I never tell you not to get married. I never tell you not to do things. I give you information, make your own choices. Because as I said, I don't like being told what to do. That's just the reality of it as well. So I'm not gonna be a hypocrite and tell you guys some guy off the internet to tell you guys to make major life choices. But I can give you some tips and definitely one is chicks with assets and finances that are similar to yours. Um, you need to be you simply careful. Go, oh well, there aren't many women around like that. Well, just avoid them then, because if you do um, have a, a breakup, long term uh, marriage breakdown, whatever it is, even the longer it goes on, the worse it gets, right? And you're relatively on parity. It's gonna the, the damage is gonna be minimal, right? You you start going out with women who okay, you make a hundred thousand, they're on fifty thousand, twenty thousand, don't work, stay at home. You are absolutely fucked. When it comes to a divorce settlement, you are going to get bent over, cheeks spread, mate, prison style, prison. Oh, it won't happen to me. She'll never do that to me. Oh, yeah, you wait and see until they know they can get a handout, guys. Because I always say this to people, you will see how much a woman really loves you when you're at divorce court because it's all about that. It's all about that. I can remember that when I went to divorce court, it was all about how much money they could pull out of me and negotiate and fight with me for and scrap for. I know it's not every woman. I know some women walk out with nothing or will walk out and they're, they're smart and they're nice to their partner and they work out, okay, I, I came in with this, you came in with that, you went this, okay, let's split it that way, reasonable. Most won't, especially when there's a payday on the line. Luckily, in, in my case, it was... Um, it, we were kind of like on equal ground, you know. She was educated, she made good money, I made good money. She had a retirement with the state government, I had a, a retirement with the federal government. So, we were probably better off than, than most, I guess. And, uh, but, Luckily, it was kind of a stalemate, you know, in between us. Like, I take yours, you take mine. Yep. We just decided just to keep our monies separate, and she wanted child support and the house. And so I gave her that. And, uh, you know, I probably could have kept ownership of the house. Um, I just didn't. I don't know. At the time when I got divorced, I just wanted out. I left a lot of stuff behind. I left all my guns. I left my tools. Uh, just tons of stuff. Tons of stuff. I don't. Um, I'm sure she got rid of some things. She. I, I know she kept my tool chest because I was at their house to fix my daughter's bike. The tire was flat, and 
they let me in the garage and there was my big old roll around tool chest she still had it so i mean but those are the things that you just you know i can replace it i didn't have a place to go uh if you've seen my other videos i moved into an rv uh basically i i think it's temporary i was thinking well eventually i'll get married and nine times out of ten the woman has the house like my Very ex true. did and i would just move in there or something or but this is another point i'll say guys like men don't really need for much or want for much and if you got to strip it back and think about all the huge purchases and debts and things you've gone into for houses and cars and things in your life. Would you have done that if it wasn't because a lady in your life wanted them? I definitely wouldn't, right? And that's the reality. I could live in a tent down at the beach, guys. Like, I don't need much. I don't spend much money. Um, and if I think of any of the times I've put myself in hot water, it's because a woman has influenced me to do, uh, do something and bite off more debt or something that I could not chew hard enough to keep up with at that particular time, all right? So we don't need for much. So men who are single, um, you know, and you don't want to get into long-term relationships, you could uh, live a pretty comfortable life off, off a lot less than if you're married and, and have children as well because that's a constant black hole. Money goes in and never to be seen again. Some kind of situation like that was, uh, I was thinking that was 90% of the time that's what I've seen. So, but I ended up in an RV and realized how uh, cheap and economically advantage it was to live there. And I just haven't found a reason to move. Uh, yeah, I can afford to buy a, you know, a place to be or a house, apartment or something. But, um, uh, but that's the thing, right, um, guys? Is Think about, as I said, think about like a house you may have bought, a big house and all that because a woman wanted it, right? And you felt that was the cost of entry for a marriage or whatever, right? We all, we all do it. We all get sucked in. You take a woman, you go house shopping with a woman and things escalate. You might start off with a $500,000 price tag. Next thing you know, you spend a million bucks, right? Or more. I want a half million dollars these days, whatever it costs for a decent family home, right? I can tell you now, I can live in a very small apartment with barely no furniture in it, a bed, um, a TV, my computer, whatever. I, I, I don't need shit. People don't need, you don't need stuff. And once you realize that, you sort of then start thinking, why would I get entrenched with a woman who's going to want things? There are very few minimalistic women out there, guys. If you find one, lock, lock onto them because there aren't many out there who are good with money and who are minimalist. Um, and most of them are going to be a black hole and cause you to spend money and do things that you don't want to do. And so the point I'm trying to say is, guys, you can live on next to nothing if you aren't chasing women or trying to impress women. I'm not saying don't do it. I'm just telling you a fact, especially as you go into middle age, 40s, 50s, 60s, you stop caring as much. I know when you're younger, all you care about is having a girl, you know, and every decision you make in your life is about getting a chick on the hook and impressing girls and being putting out the best sort of facade of how successful you are to attract women. But... I couldn't give a shit about all that anymore, guys. I wear fucking Kmart, Kmart t-shirt, like four bucks. I don't give a shit. Or I, I, that's basically what I live in. Like I, I don't go and spend all this money on clothes and expensive things and all that sort of stuff. It all goes away. It all goes into investments, all other stuff, guys. Like It's a good place to be when you realize that a lot of the time they're not worth the money that you're spending on them. I'm quite comfortable the way I'm living and it offers me the freedom to just come and go as I please I basically just basic I basically just sleep in the RV anyway so uh, my lifestyle now that I'm divorced is a lot different from my lifestyle when I was married and uh, I'll just take off on a whim like this Labor Day weekend right I'm I'm on my way to Dallas I'm going to go to the uh, JFK Museum. I've always been interested in that there in Dealey Plaza. I'll probably see some other sites there in Dallas. And then at night, I'm going to go dancing. I'm going to go. All right. So he's sort of just telling us a bit about his life, guys. But I, I, won't, I won't stretch it out too much. We're sort of running up to the 30-minute mark. I think that's a sort of decent amount of time for a video. But I think it's good to see. So basically, he's told you 
things can, things are going to be really shit in the short term, guys. If you're going through it um, or in the or in the midst of it, or you've just had a bomb dropped on you, right? But it does come good. I can tell you now, guys, it actually does come good. Life can be very good. It, it might take you a while mentally to get over it. It took me maybe three years to not be angry um, about the whole situation and things that happened. Um, but once you get sort of past that um, and you sort of start to rebuild, because depending on how young you are when you do get divorced as well, I, I, I was fortunate. I was in my early 30s or, or, or like you know approaching mid-30s. Um, I got out of that with a big setback, but it didn't ruin me. I was able to come back and I'm better than what I was back then, guys. And I'm very fortunate that it actually happened. I'm, I'm glad I should buy her a bottle of champagne or something and say thank you very much for doing that to me. Um, so guys, uh, while you could be going through a hard time, you're in the, you're in the trenches, um, you feel like you're in hell, um, it does get better. There is a light at the end of the tunnel. I can tell you that now, guys. I know what it feels like to think like it's over. Life's over. You're super stressed. You feel like you're going to lose everything. You don't know what's going to happen. You're unsure of what your purpose is going to be going forward because the woman doesn't want you anymore and you're humiliated and all that sort of stuff. But it does get better, guys. So hang in there, put your head down. And those guys who have been through it, you know, let me know what your thoughts are on the video in the comments section. But thanks a lot for watching this far if you've made it, guys. Cheers.